Hello and welcome to the first of my tutorials about Kubuntu 11.04, codename Natty Narwhal. The, as you can see, we're at the boot screen of Kubuntu. This is what you'll see if you put the CD or DVD into your computer and restart your computer. If you don't see this, then you need to change some settings in your BIOS. There are wiki pages about it and members of the community will be happy to help you. What you're seeing here is the text-based boot screen, um, which is a failsafe that happens if, you don't, if your graphics card is not good enough, or in the case of, in my case, I'm using VirtualBox version 4.0.8, which has some issues with graphics in Kubuntu. However, these graphics, these graphical issues are solved once one installs installs the guest editions, so it's not a problem. I just have to have Kubuntu installed before I can do that. After a short boot up time, we see the um, screen where we're op offered the option to try or install Kubuntu. As you can see, if you, if you choose to try it, it won't make any changes to your computer. However, you won't be able to install any new applications that aren't already included on the CD. I'm going to choose to install it so we can go th through and do a full process. The two buttons that I just ticked, the first one allows you to, uh, to install proprietary so uh, software such as MP3 codecs, Flash, etc. automatically, things that Canonical are not allowed to include on the CD. The second one will download security updates and any fi any fixes to the software while you're installing instead of having to do so afterwards. I would recommend taking both and if you, if you choose not if you choose not to that's fine too. There are some people who will choose not uh, choose not to for uh for moral reasons at least the first. And of course, if you're not connected to the internet, then you won't be able to do either. Uh, moving on, here we have the options to partition the disk. Um, right now, it's set to uh, guided. There's also manual, like not where I've set it to now. Um, the uh, guided option here is to use the entire disk. If you're installing a dual boot system with Windows, you'll need to install Windows first. And then it will find, then uh, Kubuntu will find Windows and have another guided option to, um, to shrink your Windows partition and use the remaining space. Note that once you've chosen how to partition, it's actually starting the, in the installation already. While you're busy choosing your time zone, keyboard settings, and user information, um, it will be installing in the background it will automatically detect your time zone, generally does a pretty good job. Um, it also tends to find the right keyboard for you, however you may change either of those sets of settings. Note the difference between your name and username. Username is the handle you'll use to log in, like for example I would put Alex under your name but Slangao under username. Um, also notice the three options at the bottom, require my password to log in, log in automatically, or encrypt my home folder. The default is to require your password to log in. Um, encrypting your home folder is probably the most secure, but it does have a little bit of overhead. Logging in automatically is the least secure, but for a virtual machine that's not that's not a problem because if you're able to get to the point where you can log into the virtual machine you already have access to the physical machine which is much more important. So anyway now I have the, um, the installation just fast forwarding because I don't want to bore you with 14 and a half minutes of sitting there doing pretty much nothing. You can you might as well go and get a sandwich at this point. It will Work, work automatically and then you'll reach this uh, this screen. Um, at this point you can reboot and if you've if you've got a dual boot system it will bring up a menu for you to choose whether to boot into Kubuntu or your other operating sy system. 
I'm sure for most people that'll be Windows. Again, these graphical issues here are due to uh, VirtualBox, at least I believe they are. Um, most people should see a nice an, uh, shutting down Kubuntu logo while that, that happens, which is what I see on my laptop. Anyway, now we're going to boot into Kubuntu. Uh, the boot process takes a little, a little bit of time, generally 20 to 30 seconds. So, um, after that, we'll get into the uh, login, and then we'll and then we'll be able to see the desktop. Yeah. So here it's logging in. The first time you log in, Kubuntu will take a little bit of time because it has to uh, create your settings, files, etc., etc. But after that, the login, at least on my laptop, tends to take five seconds or so. So this is the desktop that you see as uh, at your first login. It's of course completely customizable. You can remove that folder view. You can add tons of widgets. Um, over in the system tray here, we have um, Clipper, the clipboard tool. Something really nice about it is uh, that, like the Microsoft Office clipboard in Windows, it allows you to have a clipboard history. So the default uh, size is, is 10 previous items, but you can increase that or decrease that. Obviously, we've got a volume control, a battery monitor, a network monitor, and some other applets. Um, in the bottom left corner here, we have a uh, start bar. Um, well, so we finished installing, so I'm going to shut down for now.